getting into this idea of graph energy. So here is a definition. Um, so I want G to be a graph with n vertices. And edges with eigenvalues that does not have an E on it. With A. With A. The eigenvalues lambda sub 1, uh, what's the next term of them? Are all the eigenvalues real? Sorry to. Yeah, yeah. They're always yeah. going to be real? Um, in terms of what we're looking at with simple graphs. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, uh, so this implies <clears throat> that the energy of the graph. Yeah, it doesn't have to be. Okay. Yeah, no, no way. So. Cool. I think it's going to be more the case that it's complex. Right? Like it's more often the eigenvalues of complex. Right. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but obviously you got to do the simple case first, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is like the easiest graph I can find. <laughs> I can just like do it all by hand, right? Um, so that's the definition of graph <clears throat> energy. And wow. Yeah. So um, it's the sum of the absolute value of all of the eigenvalues of the graph, right? And I, I remember like hearing about it, and I kind of thought like more intuitively, like what does that tell us, right? Because this is from like such a pure math standpoint. It's like, oh, it just some of the absolute it's value like, of the yeah, eigenvalues, they call it right? energy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and so um, Ivan Gutman, he was a chemist, right, and they were looking at, like, they were allowing, you know, these vertices to represent the atoms of a molecule and the edges um, to be their bonds, and they were looking, yeah, yeah, they were looking at the energy of that, what that meant, and I don't know chemistry, so, but I was thinking, you know, like, in terms of um, what we could use it for with applications, you know, there's probably a lot more that can be done because it's a relatively new area of math right. like we were not talking about. Yeah. Right yeah, yeah, and there aren't a lot of, um, not a lot of papers have been written. On yeah. that. Um, so when we compute the energy of our example graph, right? Um, it Okay, so we had negative 1 with a multiplicity of 2 and lambda equal to 2. So the energy of the cycle graph on three vertices is 4. 4. Yeah. <laughs> 4 yeah. what? Like, what does that mean? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> hey, That's pretty cool, though. In terms of this, right? I, I mean... What I would think, you know, like it's based off of the adjacency. We're looking at the roots and then we're, yeah, finding, I don't know, the absolute value of the sum of those values. But, um, yeah, we, we were, the reason we were looking at it again was, you know, to see like if it followed a certain inequality over time. But it's interesting to think about what it could be, right? Right, because like, you know, the eigenvalues yeah. are explaining that deformation. So it's like, okay, taking the sum of all of those, but the absolute value of that sum. Yeah. I'm trying to picture what that tells you. What, is it, what do you mean by deformation? Like, so like, <clears throat> you know, you can you can look at the graph, the original graph as it embedded in some membrane, right, with with two existing vectors in, the, in that membrane. The eigenvalues tell you the deformation of that graph, what the vectors are after the deformation. That's what the eigenvalues are telling you. So then we're taking the absolute value of all those and adding those together. So. Yeah. I don't know what that means. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's my point. Yeah, I'm not yeah. hating on anything. I'm just, it's Yeah, no, no. I mean, yeah, I think after, like, you know, especially after I take, like, <clears throat> linear algebra class and, like, figure out more about what it actually, like, right. means, you know, because I'm very limited with, like, what I know. Like, this mm -hmm. was just, you know, a fun project we right. did, like, a year ago or so. But, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, that was really like all I had prepared, but I thought, you know, that's just how you compute the energy, right. like a very simple graph. No, Obviously, it's really, really cool. Yeah, it's a good thing. That's you. awesome. <laughs> would good would you say the energy of the graph increases with just the, the, the subjective complexity of the shape that you have? So Robert, there, what do you think? there you have three 
three vertices. If you just add vertices, can you just add, do happen. you add energy? Yeah. If you drew, like, additional sticks all over that, would you well, have it would, more energy? It would energy? have to be, right, because the it's directly proportional. That, the amount of vertices, is directly proportional to the eigenvalues, right? So the more vertices you add, the higher the eigenvalues are going to be. Therefore, it's going to have higher energy. Right. Which makes sense, right? That makes sense. Especially thinking of chemistry, right? You have more molecules in one space. So you have more energy. Additional you have more energy. Eigenvalues right. Have more energy. Mm -hmm. Or the Peterson graph. Oh, yeah. It's a counter. It doesn't work. Yeah, they're, they're our exceptions to, to that assumption. But, yeah, most of the time. In terms of if you're looking at, like, the cycle graph on three vertices and what you're talking about, like, the cycle graph on four and then five mm -hmm. and six, yes. That it just yes. increases sort of linearly, maybe, or? Yeah. It... I don't know. When we, like, I have the energy is here. On so what you're saying graph. for the exceptions, that would mean sometimes when you put a vertice, whatever graph that becomes is destructive. Right, because the only way for that to not be true that it starts increasing, that the energy is increasing, is for there to be some destructive sub uh, substructure in there. Yeah, I don't know what that means. Uh, it means it would have to bring it's some a, as something, the opposite of could have to con it have to it yeah, have yeah, to sure. well, no, no, <laughs> it would have to contradict and take away from the net eigenvalue energy the, the net energy. The net energy comes from those eigenvalues. Even with the absolute values? So yeah. somehow it'll have to subtract all of the, the absolute value, the right? For the energy mm -hmm. to go down. And tried to no. see. Because, right, you know, what I was interested the in, like, like, value of so the we took the constituent so whatever structure would have to make it to where this, that sum becomes a difference. Uh, the cycle doesn't, yeah, in some part, case, in some part of larger that. Graph, so mm -hmm. that kind of makes sense. Um, we you know, found the constituent tree's energy, the cycle's energy, and then the Holland graph's energy. And I wanted to see, like, if the composition of the tree and the cycle was the same. Minus the Holland graph, one and it wasn't. Like yeah. um, it so be. let me pull that. The only way for the energy to go down. Yeah. You're right. Right. You gonna write it on the board? Huh? You gonna write it on the, right the board? I'm gonna show right. you because it's, it's, okay. yeah, it's a picture. Right. So something right. that so, some some well, mechanism has to be like. You know, if you insert this kind of vertice so, so, yeah. in this kind of angle or something like that, then okay, I should stop. I should stop. I guess. All right. Cool. Yeah. Oh wait, wait, wait. Oh, 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 oh. You sure? I can aim it there. Okay, just just yeah. for the people on the internet. Yeah. So that was how they increased as the number of vertices increased and. Okay, oh, so, there so it, it is, is, right there. It is roughly linear. Yeah. Roughly linear. Okay. Roughly cool. Yeah. All right, maybe like people will leave comments like yeah. graph energy experts. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this girl doesn't know what she's yeah. doing. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. All right, yeah. cool. All right, that's it. Thanks.